you are now tuned in to the Keys and Seeds podcast, where we discuss music, mental health, and spirituality from the perspective of Ken the artist, as well as Ken the person behind the arts. And of course, if you support the pod, then you two are also Ken. Be sure to join the conversation and follow the pod at Keys Exceeds Pod. And as always, knowledge and kindness is key. This is episode 10. And without further ado, let's jump into the episode. Welcome back to the pod, everyone. This is episode 10. And I am excited for this episode in particular because this is a milestone episode. Meaning, this is the first double digit episode of the Keys and Seeds podcast. And not only is it the first double digit episode, but this is also the first episode that I am recording in real time, meaning the time of this episode being recorded in the time that this episode would be released has a very short window in between it. And I am very excited about that because If you've been listening and tuning in up until this point, you know that I have been very transparent about episodes one through nine being recorded before actually launching the pod. So, yeah, with this being a milestone episode and this being the first episode that I'm recording in real time, I thought to just use this episode as a time to really just catch y'all up to speed with where I actually am now in life (laughs) a lot has changed excuse this loud notification going off a lot has changed um over the past few weeks over the past few months and like I said I'm just gonna take the time in this episode to really you know update y'all so I guess you could kind of look at this as a filler episode, but it's not going to be the type of filler episode where what I'm talking about is not important. Although this is somewhat of a filler episode, this is a very important filler episode. I feel like this is going to be the most important episode that I've released yet. Honestly, of course, you know, There's going to be episodes, you know, following this one that will, you know what I'm saying, be a step above this one. And I'm going to continue to, you know, reach new heights with this pod. However, like I said, I've been very transparent with you guys about episodes one through nine being recorded before launching the pod. And so, yeah, um, it's been a little over a month since I recorded episode nine and knowing that as those episodes were releasing and I wasn't even in the same place that I was in when I recorded those episodes, I feel like there's a lot that has taken place not only over the past few months, but since the beginning of this year and it's now May. So, um, Yeah, everything that I will share with you guys and update you guys on, I feel are very important things as far as how it relates to the pod and how it relates to, you know, who I now am as far as, you know, change taking place within me internally, mentally, spiritually, um, etc. But yeah, so I plan to use this episode to respond to episodes one through nine of course I'm going to try and be as brief as possible because of course everything that I have to share and update you guys on I will not be able to realistically expand too too much on just for the sake of it being you get what I'm saying a lot of things where I can't realistically get to all of it in one episode right but just as a disclaimer um this will be more of a lengthier episode I imagine it being one um but although you guys know that I have been saying you know I want to be mindful 
about how long each episode is. I'm done apologizing for how long an episode is. Whenever I feel called to come to this mic and speak, I'm going to speak until I feel led to shut up. (laughs) And we're going to go from there because it's not going to be the end of the world if it's a long episode. If I got to make a part two, part three, part four, whatever, that's just what it's going to be. And yeah, I'm done apologizing for taking up space. And I'm kind of nervous to do this episode because I, I really do have a lot of important things to update you guys on. But yeah, before we get into that, however, before getting into the meat of the episode, I do have a few announcements slash things that I want to plug that I felt would make sense to, you know what I'm saying, drop in at the beginning of the episode before like really getting into things. And then also stick around until the end of the episode because I have a few other things that I want to announce and, you know, plug that I feel only would make sense to drop at the end of the episode. So with that said, let's get into the announcement slash things to plug. My debut album, Kite Still Exists, as well as the deluxe is out now everywhere, including on Bandcamp at kindlemusic.bandcamp.com. For those who are not familiar with Bandcamp, it is a website that allows independent artists to truly get paid what they believe they are worth for their art. So if you have it to give and you support me the way that you say you do, please purchase my art via making a donation 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 on <laughs> kindlemusic.bandcamp.com you can pay for my music and also download it you can buy my music and download it my debut album kai still exists as well as the deluxe is out now everywhere and on bandcamp not only that but i am currently on a i guess you could say single run Um, This year, I am making it my goal and I am making it my business to release everything that I have been sitting on and I currently have in my vault. So with that said, I have already released both a single pack and another single and the single pack is titled Spring Pack. I released at the top of April. It features the singles SOS and Oasis said that backwards featuring Oasis and (laughs) SOS Um, I released those two singles as a single pack at the beginning of April it was supposed to come out in March but you know I'm saying I planned for um, I planned to release at least one song starting with March but it wasn't able to drop in March so I ended up dropping two things technically in April so I dropped a spring pack That consists of two singles titled Oasis and SOS at the beginning of March. And I also dropped a single titled Moonlight at the end of April. And of course, with it now being May, depending on when you listen to this episode, the same week that this episode will be releasing, I will also be releasing another single as my May release. And if you want to know more about that single, and hear about it first here make sure you stick around until the end of the episode and i will give you guys more detail also this isn't really new news but also as far as the music my single rekindle that i released as my um you know artist rebrand originally that single was only under the name of Kindle, which is my new artist name, but I had the bright idea of pulling the release and re-releasing it under both my current artist name and my previous artist name, just in case, you know, anyone comes across my previous artist name and, you know, the page that still has all of my previous releases under that name. And yeah, if anyone comes across the artist page on streaming of my previous artist name, they will see the single rekindle as my latest release. And 
the bright idea I had behind re-releasing that single under both names is if anyone comes across the streaming page for my previous artist name, they will still see that single and it would be somewhat of a bridge over to my new artist name and what I'm currently releasing. So I also did that and moving on from music as we get into the meat of this episode visuals as you guys know I have been wanting to do visuals for this pod I have wanted to I have been wanting to have a visual aspect for all of these episodes that I record and I was able to do a visual for a few of the episodes and really I was able to do more than what actually was able to be released however they did not be they they did not um they were not able to be released because of technical difficulties but long story short just to update you guys about whether or not you can expect visuals for this podcast unfortunately as of right now I will not be able to do visuals for this episode I mean for this podcast meaning the same way you are able to tune into an episode and hear it you will not be able to tune into a full episode and hear it and watch it visually um I realized that the camera that I was using is quite literally that a camera and I'm realizing that I actually need a camcorder in order to do what it is I'm trying to do as far as visuals. And right now, your girl does not have a camcorder or camcorder money. So if you would like to sow a seed into the pod so that I can afford a camcorder, by all means, I am not pressuring y'all, but just letting you guys know that that's where we are right now with the visuals. And I thought that I had to update you guys on that as well because I'm very upset about it but it's a podcast and at the end of the day y'all tuning in to hear what I have to say so if you truly support the pod and you enjoy listening to the pod just bear with me and I love y'all everyone that's here tune again sticking around being along for the journey with me and with us and at and with all of that said Let's jump into the meat of this episode. All right, you guys. Episode 10. Like I said, this is a milestone episode. And not only is it a a milestone episode, but this is also the first episode that I am recording in real time. I've been very transparent with you guys as far as episodes one through nine being recorded before launching the pod and with that said as those episodes started to release each week those episodes weren't an accurate picture of where I was then as they started to release so just to you know what I'm saying like recap really quickly and give y'all a timeline. Episode one was recorded at the top of the year. Episode one was recorded January 16th. And it did not release until March 19th. So episode one was recorded January 16th and episode nine was recorded March 8th. So you take the beginning of January and the beginning of March, and then you shift that to the end of March with the first episode I recorded back in January being released March 19th, right? So an episode that I recorded in January did not release until March 19th. And 
episode nine, the last episode that I recorded before launching the pod. I recorded that March 8th and it did not release until now, May. So y'all do that math. If I recorded nine episodes in between January and March, of course, as those episodes are now releasing one episode a week, starting at the end of March, of course, by the time episode one released, I was no longer in the same place that I was in when I recorded those episodes. Y'all follow me? So the window of time of me recording the episodes and then the window of time of me releasing the episodes. On top of that, it's been a little over a month since I've recorded episode nine. So not only do I feel I have to update you guys and catch you guys up to speed on what has taken place in my life over the past month or so but also too I feel like I need to kind of catch y'all up to speed as to where I am now and who I am now as it relates to all of the changes that have been taking place in my life since the beginning of this year so like I said, this is going to be somewhat of a filler episode, but a very important filler episode. So I really do pray and hope that you guys tune in and really like take the time to take in everything that I have to say and share. Because like I said, I feel as if I have a lot of things to share that are actually very important. And I'm actually very nervous to share and you would know why as I start to share what I have to share. But before I actually get into that, I am excited to be back on the mic recording because like I said, it's been a little over a month since I recorded episode nine. And as those episodes that I had already recorded before the launch were releasing, I was able to have a much needed break. During that time, I simply was just preparing the visual content for the episodes and I really was able to step away from recording and truly just live my life however <clears throat> when I say so much has changed so much has changed and Listening to all of those episodes I had already pre-recorded, listening to those episodes as if I was, you know, a listener, I literally was tuning into each week, um, each episode as they were releasing each week, right? So as I was taking the time to just, you know, listen to each episode like, you know, I'm a listener and I'm not the person behind the pod, I was cringing, so hard so hard because like I said I was recognizing the fact that where I was and you know where I am now like listening to these episodes it's not when I recorded those episodes it's not an accurate reflection of where I've been these past few weeks listening to those episodes release right um but yeah, not only was it cringy, because, you know, of course, as I've been very transparent with you guys, as far as when I recorded the episodes and when I planned on releasing them, um, although you guys knew that, you know, the episodes weren't reflective of where I was in real time as it was releasing, y'all didn't know, like, what was truly going on, like, for real, for real, but I did. And so not only was it cringy, for me to listen to each episode and I'm like wow like I don't even think like that no more like I don't even stand on that no more 
that's not even who I am anymore. I don't even want to show up for the pod as their version of myself anymore. Like, not only was it cringy in that way, but I was also heavily convicted on a lot of things that I was very loud about and stood 10 toes on. And not only did I want to scrap those episodes while I still had the time to record a new episode in real time. Not only did I want to scrap those episodes simply because it was cringy, but I also wanted to like hurry up and clear my name. Cause I'm like, bro, not only is this cringy for me just because I'm recognizing my own growth, but I have also grown in a way where I actually was convicted on some things. And I'm like, the last thing that I want to do is be loud about something and wrong. And the last thing that I want to do is misuse the platform that God gives me and plant certain information within people and have them believe that it's correct and it's okay. The last thing that I want to do is knowing that the responsibility that I have with my platform is being misused and I'm leading people down the wrong path, essentially. And it's a path that I'm recognizing is wrong in real time and a path that I now am no longer walking on myself. You follow me? But one, realistically, I wasn't going to scrap all of those episodes because one, I made the decision of recording a whole bunch of episodes at once. So I felt like I had to stand behind that decision because why would I sit here and scrap episodes that required hours of my time? Right. So because the fact that it was still content, like content is content, right? It was already recorded. So I'm like, okay, realistically, I'm not about to sit here and scrap all of these episodes and then try and hurry up and you get what I'm saying? Re-record a new episode. Like it's that deep, but at the same time, it's really not. (laughs) It's really not. So I'm like, okay, although I want to scrap these episodes, I'm not going to scrap them because content is still content. And what I had to say in those episodes, someone listening and tuning in will still be able to get something from those episodes, right? Not only that, but God is very intentional. God knew what my life would look like once March had hit and all of those episodes that I had already recorded started to be released. So the fact that God was intentional about me recording episodes one through nine before actually launching the pod, it was something that I didn't fully, you know, realize at that time, at that time that I was recording those episodes, I simply, you know, had the bright idea of just preparing episodes in advance because I knew going into this year that I didn't want to launch my pod until March. But I'm like, okay, well, while I still got January and February, why not record some episodes? So that way, once March hit, I already got some in a vault. So I thought I was thinking smarter and not harder. And essentially I was, um, But of course, at that time, I knew that at the time of those episodes releasing, I knew that it wasn't going to be a clear picture of where I actually was at that time, meaning where I was when I recorded the episodes in comparison to when the episodes released. I knew it was going to be some type of change, some type of this, this difference, excuse me, But I didn't think it was going to be that much of a difference. So, of course, you know, I had that thought in the back of my mind, but I'm like, "Mm, 
I'm still about to record all of these episodes, as, as many episodes as I can before the launch of the pod. So, you know, I'm working smarter, not harder. And I feel less pressure keeping up with the schedule that I want to set of releasing an episode each week. Right. So my goal is to drop an episode for this podcast every week. And I feel like that's a very realistic goal. However, I know that life is unpredictable. I know that change is inevitable. And I know that there might be times where I fall short and I might not be able to keep my word. So I was really anxious about keeping up with that pressure of showing up each week, not knowing what each week of my life will look like. And I'm the type of person, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what I'm going through, I still try my best to push through and show up and keep my word on things. I don't like making excuses for myself. And yeah, I don't know. I I, I place a lot of pressure just on myself. So I'm like, okay, if I tell these people I'm going to drop an episode a week, why not try and, you know what I'm saying, have some episodes in a vault so that way, you know, once we start getting closer to the release of episode nine, I can start, you know, recording some more episodes. But I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do that because as I'm realizing that I'm in a different place, as these episodes are releasing, I'm like, you know what? Let me just stand all the way in my truth and you know show up and grow with you guys in real time and really just show up every week and if it comes a point in time where I won't be able to show up for that week it is what it is but like I said I don't like making excuses for myself and not only do I desire to be consistent but I know that I should be consistent with something like you know what I'm saying a podcast because it's bigger than me but although I was able to take some time away from recording and enjoy that break a little bit like I said <laughs> listening to some of the episodes it was very cringy for me but also like on a whole other level because I felt heavily convicted on a lot of the things that I said in those episodes and the ways in which I showed up for the episode. So for the episodes, plural. So as I'm listening, you know, I'm taking notes like, okay, this is what I'm going to do differently. This is how I'm going to show up better, you know, once I, you know, come back. But during that time, it was so hard for me to not like scrap those episodes and plug up a mic. And, you know what I'm saying, hurry up and clean up what I said and correct what I said and what I did and ways I showed up. And, you know what I'm saying, like, it was so hard for me to just sit there and watch and listen to all of those episodes be released. Because, like I said, where I was over the past few weeks as I was listening to each episode, I'm tuning into a version of myself that I was weeks prior you get what I'm saying and like I said at the time of me recording those episodes I didn't think it would be that much of a difference but when I tell y'all so much has happened so much change has been taking place has taken place in my life both internally mentally spiritually um but also you know externally <sighs> y'all but like I said God is very intentional because there was a reason why he had me document where I was before launching the pod and dropping those episodes not being able to step in during that process of releasing episodes that I already had recorded not only was I not going to scrap the episodes because it was still content but I knew that God quite literally did not want me to 
scrapped the episodes. And God still wanted me to take that time to ride out that process as changes were still taking place. And as I am about to respond (laughs) to episodes one through nine with where I now am, with it being May, um, before I get into that, I did want to share that during that time that I took off from, you know, recording and just tuning into each episode as I was, you know, pretending to just be a listener, um, I came across this sermon that Sarah Jakes Roberts did. And anyone who knows me knows that I love Sarah Jakes and Jackie Hill. Um, just, you know, two examples of women, um, you know, who, whose brand is, you know, based off of, you know, their faith and their spirituality and, you know, just them being women, how they carry themselves. I I love them. So Sarah Jake specifically, because this is who I'm talking about, love her. And she recently did a sermon titled hope to bloom and before she started preaching and as I explain this um is is gonna tie into what I was just saying before she started preaching um in this online sermon that I was watching she invited this woman up on stage and She basically asked Sarah, she basically asked the woman who she invited up on stage if she could share a few words with, you know, the women and the audience tuning in. Um, If she could share a few words as it relates to blooming. And (laughs) long story short, um, and like I said, this sermon is titled Hope to Bloom by Sarah Jakes. I really encourage you guys to watch it of course the whole sermon but if you don't watch the whole sermon at least watch the um like the beginning part of it because that's what I'm referencing it that's that's what I'm referencing um of course the woman that I'm referencing will explain it better than I can and I will but basically long story short she invited this woman up on stage to share a few words with you know the women in the audience Um, about how it relates to blooming and long story short she was like Sarah I've been thinking about dog poop and Sarah's like what and she's like yeah I've been thinking about dog poop and she basically shares that um, she and her husband waited until you know they got a, a house with a yard in order to get a dog you know, apparently they wanted a dog, but, you know, they were like, we're going to wait until we get a house in the yard because we're going to put the dog in the yard. And, you know, when they go to the bathroom in the yard, you know, it'll be, you know, good for the ground. And so thinking that, you know, the the poop or whatever from the dog would be good for the ground and, you know, she wouldn't have to go back there and, you know, pick it up and clean up behind the dog. She said that she was confused when she started to realize that, you know, the poop just continued to sit there and, you know, she was in the backyard, you know, like tiptoeing over it, like, okay, God, like, you know, I thought this was, you know, good for the ground. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought it was going to be, you know, fertile. Like, why is this still sitting here? And long story short, apparently dog poop takes... I think she said six months to two years to actually be used as, you know, fertile or I guess like fertilization for the ground. Like basically it takes a while for, you know, the poop to actually be good for the grass. And so her using that, she's like, God told me to tell you (laughs) that Although you want to hurry up and clean up some things, you just got to let it sit. You just got to give it time to actually be used for something good. Gather it up. 
put it to the side, water it, you know, sprinkle it with some light and move on. Stop giving attention to it. Stop trying to go through it. Stop trying to hurry up and clean it up and, you know, manipulate the fertilization yourself. Step away from it. Give it time to go through the process that it has to go through and get to the point of it actually being something for good. Because right now it might look like trash to you. Right now it might look as if it's just sitting and nothing is happening. Right now it might look as if, you get what I'm saying, it's, it's trash and it's something, you know, ugly and disgusting and you want to hurry up and, you know, go through it and clean it up and manipulate it. But God is just telling you to leave it alone and really allow God to take you through the process of blooming. And like I said, the sermon is titled Hope to Bloom. In addition to what that woman said, it was a very great sermon. But of course, if you just listen to the first half, you will be able to hear exactly how she explained it. And when I listened to that, it so it, it related so much to where I was as I felt like God was forcing me to still tune into each episode that I had already pre-recorded and I wanted to hurry up and clean up. Because like I said, I recorded episodes one through nine from in between the time of January and the beginning of March. And I did not launch this podcast until the end of March. And episode nine that just released now in May was recorded back in March. So like I said, and I'm, I'm going to be done repeating myself, but just to like really make it clear to you guys, as those episodes were releasing, of course, I was in a totally different space than I was in when I was recording those episodes. And so not only was I able to like recognize and, you know, be a witness to my own growth in real time. And it was cringy because I'm like, dang, like, I don't even think like that no more. Like, of course, you know, as time goes on, you know, I recognize, you know, my own growth, you know, in, in different ways and, you know, in small ways, However, when I say the cringiness was on a level of me being convicted and it was extremely uncomfortable for me to sit there and listen to all of those episodes continue to release. And I'm like, when I say not only have had things in my life changed externally, but internally, like mentally, spiritually on that level, I've grown in such a way where I feel like. I quite literally went through a spiritual awakening. It was crazy, y'all. And I've been through, you know, spiritual awakenings before, meaning, like I said, as we all continue to go through life, of course, you know, well, let me not say we, let me speak for myself. As I go through life and I experience, you know, different things, of course, I grow in, you know, different ways, naturally, just that's just how life is as I'm, you know, continuing, continuing to progress through life, move forward through life and grow older by the day, right? Of course, I'm not going to be the same person that I was last year. Not only that, but yesterday, last week, last month, right? But I feel like I grow at such a rapid speed sometimes that sometimes it's not even just regular growth like I'll just get a a major like whoa wait 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 wait. okay like this this really just opened up my eyes and now I'm in a pivotal season of my life to where not only am I you know growing in small ways but like no moving forward I'm moving differently in a major way, right? And so 
like I said, during that time, not only was it just a, a cringiness of, oh, I've grown a little bit and I'm realizing like that's no longer me. But like it was a heaviness of, wow, I really got on this mic and was loud and stood 10 toes on certain things. And I came on this mic and I carried myself in a way in which I'm now disgusted and embarrassed by. Like, it was it was on that level. I was heavily convicted. But with that said, um, I'm going to look over the schedule of episodes one through nine, and I'm going to just respond to, you know, each episode based off of where I now am. And I know that we're already nearing an hour. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I know that I'm not going to be able to realistically expand on each thing the way I really, really want to um, right now. But of course, I will do more expanding as time goes on and I release more episodes. So, yeah, I'm trying to see where do I want to start? Because <sighs> so much has, has, has taken place, you guys. So, first and foremost, <laughs> when I say God was very intentional about me recording episodes before launching the pod, not only to be able to, like, show me myself in a different way, but... During that time that the episodes were releasing and I wanted to hurry up and get back on the mic and clear my name and, you know, clear up things that I was saying and, you know, stop myself from saying things that I had already recorded, but y'all didn't hear yet. Um, there were times where I quite literally could not come to a mic, not only because God was telling me like, yeah, nah, I don't want you to scrap these episodes and try and hurry up and clean it up. But literally, like, mentally, physically, like, I could not come to a mic. <sighs> and I say that to say that I have been going through heavy spiritual warfare. And... From the beginning of this pod, I've been very vocal about, you know, believing in God and following God. However, I also was very vocal about also being into things that I didn't realize at the time I shouldn't have been in. I was partaking in things that I had no business partaking in. And, you know, I had heard people telling me like, oh, you know, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And I didn't fully realize it at the time, but not only was I very defensive, but defensive in a way where I felt the need to explain myself <laughs> and in a way that literally did not make sense and I realized that at that time it was just something that I didn't want to hear but during that time that I took off from recording God came to me and spoke to me in a way that had me so shook y'all I was convicted <laughs> like I, I really don't know how else to put it like I said I've always you know been very vocal about you know loving God and following God and I was aware of the fact that you know my faith wasn't as strong as it you know, needed to be and, you know, should be. 
However, I didn't realize the seriousness and how much I was, you know what I'm saying, lukewarm and on the fence and, you know, choosing God, but also choosing other things that God did not want me choosing. And during that time, as those episodes were being released, God quite literally put it in my face to the point where God was telling me it's either you're choosing all of me and you're giving me all of you or nothing (laughs) because I've been trying to get your attention. I've been trying to tell you and you know, It wasn't really, you know, piercing you and sticking you because your heart was hardened and you was defensive. However, um, I'm going to put it to you this way and I'm going to show it to you in this way. So you can know that this is really me. And what you thought was me is not really me. And God quite literally just showed me my blind spots and my own demons as I was, you know, encountering other people and witnessing demons within them. And once I had that encounter with God and I'm like, Oh, it's, it's a no brainer. Like I'm, I'm choosing you. (laughs) Like once God had like shook me to the point where I'm like, Okay, first of all, it's a no-brainer. Like, um, I'm not about to consciously choose both you and other things that I shouldn't be choosing. But at the same time, it was still like, oh, my God. Like, of course, you know, I, I knew that I still had, you know, my questions and my doubts. But I didn't realize the seriousness and how deep I was into it. Meaning I was coming into agreement with things that, God never intended for me to come into agreement with, but because I was attempting to choose both God and the things that I was coming into agreement with, it led me to a situation of me quite literally coming face to face with demons. And as I'm encountering demons, (laughs) I'm being shown my own demons and through me being shown my own demons, I'm realizing, wow, these demons manifested because of the doorways that I opened and I allowed them to walk through. So I also have to take accountability for the ways in which I haven't been choosing God a hundred percent and giving God all of me and still, you know what I'm saying? Leaving that door in for things that isn't God. Right. And so (laughs) at this very moment, I can't detail too much of you know what took place in my life but when I say I've been going through heavy spiritual warfare heavy spiritual warfare and I'm thankful that God showed me myself and showed me the fact that I was operating in the spirit of double-mindedness and how serious that was and I'm happy that I had the encounter with God that I had because I feel like, like I said, the growth that I now have is on a totally different level. I can't think of the, the, the exact verse, Mm -hmm. like name and number right now, but I can't help but to think about the scripture that speaks about how we walk by faith and not by sight, not by sight. Right. And that scripture is, 
being put in my spirit because I'm a very logical person or like, how can I put this? You know, I, I trust God and I believe in God because I'm able to look back on my life on past situations that God has pulled me through because I'm like, okay, if God has done it, you know, before in numerous times, like why would God bring me this far just to leave me? Right? Like that makes sense to me. However, when I'm currently in things that I can't see past me being the the person that wants to go through the dog poop, I'm like, My instincts are kicking in, and although I don't want to take the place of God and be in control of everything, I feel as if I have to because I feel like, you know what I'm saying? I'm in a situation that doesn't make sense to me, but now I have to figure it out. When God has really been trying to get my attention on the fact that I quite literally do not have to figure it out because... One, God always ends up figuring things out himself without our help. (laughs) But also, two, it goes back to the scripture of we walk by faith and not by sight. Regardless of what things look like, nothing is a surprise to God. Meaning, we're now being faced with a, a new situation that, you know, we've never seen and we can't see past, but it's not a surprise to God. And because it's not a surprise to God, God has seen past what we currently see and feel as if we can't see past. So not only has God been reminding me to like truly tap in and lean in and have faith in God, but Tapping into the fact that faith requires you to be in the spiritual realm. Because having faith in God is not meant to make logical sense, right? And like I said, I've always been a very spiritual person. I've always been aware of the fact that the spiritual realm is very much real and it influences the physical realm. However, I know that I tether the line of spiritual and natural way too much. God allowed me to realize that, you know, although I'm aware of the fact that there's, you know, a spiritual realm and, you know, the things that we see in the physical really is just a reflection of what's taking place um, in the spiritual Although that's something that I've always been aware of, I tend to focus too much on the physical. I tend to focus too much on what things look like. And the, what's the word I'm looking for? The problem, I guess there was another word that wanted to come to mind. The problem, the issue with focusing too much on the physical, it's not problem or issue. I'm, I'm hearing the word warning. The, the, the scary, the scary part about focusing too much on the physical is sometimes that allows us to forget about the fact that there's still a spiritual aspect above and behind everything. Even if we forget that for a second, because it's not enough to just say that we are aware of the spiritual realm and knowing that you get what I'm saying? The things that we see and that we're living in and the physical is a reflection of that. It's not enough to just be aware of that. You have to truly be aware of the ins and the outs of the spiritual realm. And you cannot do that without truly 
tapping in into the spiritual realm and knowing that there's polarity in everything you got good spirit (laughs) and you got bad spirits meaning as someone who's always been a believer in God and I started this pod not wanting to get too too preachy but I'm not ashamed (laughs) to speak on God especially after the transformation that God has been taking me through and the encounters that I've had behind closed doors over the past few weeks. Knowing that you have both good spirits and bad spirits, that essentially means that you either choosing God or you're choosing the enemy. And it's not enough to just say, oh, of course I'm not choosing the enemy. It's, it's not enough to just say, oh, yeah, I believe in God. Like, yeah, I know he exists. It's, it's not enough. You quite literally have to choose one or the other. And I know that, you know, everyone believes different things. And like I said, I didn't want to be the person that felt as if I was pressing and, you know, pushing my beliefs upon other people. But I know that God is pushing me to a place of being more vocal about my belief in God and my relationship with God. And like I said, knowing how God has revealed himself to me and moved in my life, especially over the past few weeks, I'm not going to be quiet about it no more because I'm not ashamed and I know that it's bigger than me. I always knew that, but that's been put in my face even more now. And I say that to say, regardless of what you believe, I believe and I know that everyone will reach a place of truly having to choose a side it's not enough to just be lukewarm it's not enough to just be in the middle it's not enough to just play the background it's not enough to just say oh of course I'm not gonna be on the side of the enemy it's it's not enough I quite literally believe that God is pushing everyone into that place if he hasn't already God is pushing everyone into that place of choosing a side. You either truly with God and giving him your 100% or you not. And like I said, I had an encounter where God quite literally had that conversation with me and brought me to that fork in the road. And I'm like, of course, I'm not about to choose the side of the enemy. Like, God, I'm choosing you. But although that was a no-brainer decision and that part of it was easy, it was very difficult and uncomfortable for me to realize the ways in which I wasn't choosing God 100% and realizing the seriousness of me having a double mind because I opened the door to a lot of things that I shouldn't have opened the door to. And long story short, (laughs) them tarot cards, threw them away. The crystals, throw them away. Sage, throw them away. The Greek merch that I had, threw it away. And them angel numbers, demonic. (laughs) And 
I truly realized what I thought was ways in which God was speaking to me was really the enemy. And the same way God speaks to us, the enemy does too. And again, I don't know scripture by heart yet, but there's a scripture that speaks on how the enemy disguised himself as an angel of light. When you focus too much on the physical, forgetting that there's a spiritual aspect to things and a spiritual aspect to things that's not just love and light and rainbows and Jesus, you will realize just how easy it is to be deceived. And your girl was deceived. And like I said, I had always heard from people like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. It's demonic, you know, X, Y, and Z. And God also allowed me to see that I still was stuck in the fact that when I think of God and following God, I also think too much about religion and having a true relationship with God is not about religion, meaning religion more so focuses on doing what's right and rejecting what's wrong, but not truly focusing on the relationship with God and Whenever people came to me and told me, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that, it never came from a place of love and a place of, I'm telling you this because I have a relationship with God and I know this. I feel like people are just quick to jump down your throat and tell you what's right and what's wrong. And I've always been very defensive towards that because, first of all, even when it does come to having having a relationship with God. People are going to be convicted about things at different times. The same way we know that drinking and smoking is also wrong. I know that there's someone right now that has a real relationship with God and still smoking. Although I know God told me to stop, that doesn't mean that that's where God is with somebody else. They might just be convicted on something else right now, right? Just like I was convicted on not smoking anymore, not drinking anymore, not cursing anymore. And oh my God, I was so embarrassed at the fact that I quite literally was not only showing up for this pod, being loud and wrong about following God and being into tarot and saying like, oh yeah, it's in the Bible. No, I was manipulating scripture to fit it into a way that it was comfortable for me. But once I was really shown the fact that that's what I was doing and I was shown like, no, 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 this, this is the true meaning of these scriptures. And this right here is the truth. What you thought was the truth took the truth and manipulated it. So now you're deceived and now you're spreading false information being manipulative and deceiving. And I was just like, wow, because like I said, it was something that I was always very defensive about whenever people told me, but I truly did believe what I believed at the time. Because literally what I just said, it wasn't just a completely left field idea of quote unquote truth. It was something that took truth and manipulated it. So I'm like, okay, like it is scriptures that these things can be traced back to. There are elements of Christianity that these things can be traced back to. So that's why in a, in a, in a sense, I still was like, okay, it might not be for you, but just because you're ignorant about something doesn't make it demonic because I feel like a lot of people are quick to judge things that they 
quite literally don't know too much about. However, I realized those people that was trying to get to me were right. I just wasn't one trying to hear it at the time. And two, they were going about communicating the truth to me in a way where it still was mean spirited and religion focuses on doing what's quote unquote good or right and avoiding what's wrong, but not truly focusing on having a relationship with God. It's a lot of people who are out here feeding the homeless out here you know what I'm saying doing what's quote-unquote good avoiding you know what's quote-unquote bad but their heart is far from God and there's also scriptures that speaks to the fact that obedience is better than sacrifice obedience meaning God truly just wants your heart and you following behind him not making sacrifices based off of what you feel is quote unquote good or what you feel is quote unquote bad. It's a lot of people who feel like, oh yeah, I'm going to get into heaven because I'm a good person. Okay, that's great. But do you know God? Does God know you? And <laughs> I used to get defensive when people who were religious more so you know focused on what's right and what's wrong but not having a relationship with God I was offended when they would approach me and tell me oh what you're doing is wrong what you're doing is demonic when I knew they didn't know God and I know that I know God it was just certain things that God hadn't revealed to me yet and he has now which only further confirms for me that God does know me. <laughs> Come on now. None of us are perfect. We're all going to fall short of the glory of God. But that is why we need God. Once we start relying on other people and other things, that's when God starts to be cropped out of the picture. And God showed me that that's where I was. God has been placing within me the word foundation and reminding me, you grew up in church. You grew up in truth. And not saying that every church is, you know, Holy Spirit filled and led by. But I knew the truth and I just strayed from it. And the more I strayed from it, the the more doors I started to open to things that shouldn't have been opened. And God revealed to me that this podcast truly is a ministry and something that God is going to use for his glory. And he didn't want me to scrap those episodes because all of these episodes, as they're a reflection of bits and pieces of my journey, is a part of my testimony. So, yes, I once was into this. Yes, I once did that. But guess what? That's not me anymore. So what are you holding over my head? Nothing, <laughs> nothing. And while you're busy judging someone else's relationship with God, truly take a look at yourself and ask yourself, what relationship do you have with God? That's all. <laughs> um. So, yeah, just looking at my notes. Um, Ecclesiastics three verses one through eight. Um. The scripture about, you know, there's a season and a time for everything. Um, you know, God was just very intentional about me docu documenting, you know, where I was during that time. I was loud and wrong and standing on the wrong things and was intentional about me releasing those episodes and just stepping away. Literally just stepping away from the dog poop and not going through it so that I'm able to clearly see myself and realize that I quite literally cannot do this without God and everything else that I thought was God 
was quite literally not God. And I need to be more in the spiritual than I am in the physical, not only to have hope and to keep faith, but to realize that quite literally everything is not God. Everything is not God. And, um, yeah, during that time, I also listened back to, um, my past tape chaotic. That was the first project that I ever released. And I've always known it, but I'm like, I'm very prophetic. And it's something about me that like I embrace and I lean into, but I don't embrace and lean into as much as I should. And it was a gift that I felt that the enemy wanted to try and grab a hold of and manipulate in a way. Because, like I said, I've I've always known things intuitively, but I question things a lot. And God doesn't mind us questioning things, but it's about our heart, our heart posture when we question things. We should never question God from a place of doubt or thinking that. God truly doesn't have all of the answers because God's word is enough. And again, when you start seeking external things for answers, you'll get an answer and it'll be correct most of the time. But who is the source? Because the same way God knows you, the enemy studies you and knows you as well. And yeah, the same way I had a, a a divine encounter, the same way God came and visited me, the enemy visited me as well and manifested to me in a way where I'm like, okay, so you, you been here, but now like you really here in my face. That's crazy. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm shook. But at the same time, God didn't give me the spirit of fear and God gave me the power to come up against every demon. So who are you playing with me? Who are you playing with? (laughs) Cause you ain't playing with me. Find you something something safe to do and find you someone safe to play with. Um, But yeah. Even when, when I did the episode of Pushing P, it's like God shows me in different ways just how prophetic I am and, like, the fact that I do be knowing stuff and it's information that comes from God. But, yeah. And speaking of chaotic, I am going to get into my discography very, 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 very soon, and I'm very excited about it. However, I'm really, at this point, just letting God lead and letting God move. So we're going to get to it when God is ready for me to. Um, So yeah, episodes one through two was the introduction. And I shared with you guys, you know, a little bit of, you know, my faith and what I was standing on. And that foundation got shaken up. And I am here to let y'all know that I am born again and I am following Jesus Christ to be free from sin. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so yeah, just like I was just as loud about, you know, following tarot and using crystals and, Oh, yoga isn't demonic. That's demonic too. (laughs) I was, I was shown that too. I, God quite literally put me in a space of, okay, all of what you wasn't trying to hear, like, let me truly put you in a place where I'm about to present the information back to you, but also make sure that you know it's the truth and it's going to really, like, pierce your heart this time. And God quite literally did that. So, yeah, threw away them tarot cards, threw away the crystals, the sage, um, threw away the Greek merch. And, um, yeah, 
And I'm going to be a lot more vocal about how good God is. I didn't want to make this a Christian podcast and just talk about God, 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 because I do want to talk more about mental health and music as I am an artist. But, um, yeah, I knew that this was a ministry from jump. Like I knew that God was going to use me somehow through this pod, but God really showed me just how much of a ministry this podcast is and will be. And I'm letting God get all of the glory. So as I am claiming the Christian title now, knowing that it's about the relationship that I know I have now with God. And it's not about the religious side of things. Um, yeah, like I said, um, claiming a Christian title now, and I'm gonna be talking about God a whole lot more, especially on my TikTok, because I've been on Christian TikTok as of recently. And I know God has been like tugging on my heart to like share certain scriptures that he's been leading me to and sharing more of my testimony, not only, you know, of course on this pod, but on TikTok. So make sure y'all also follow me on TikTok because I'm gonna be on there a whole lot more with the Jesus talk. I'm gonna dial it back a little bit on here. I'm gonna be very loud about it, but, um, yeah, it's not going to just be Jesus talk on here. It's also going to be about mental health and spirituality. And of course, I'm also going to be talking about that on TikTok. but for those who are interested, I know that I'm going to be talking about Jesus and diving into scripture, like for real, for real more, um, on my TikTok. I do plan to do that. Um, so yeah, continuing to look at my notes, <sighs> episode three was new year, new me. Um, of course, a lot of those goals that I had getting more into tarot, um, getting more tattoos. Like I actually want my tattoos removed now, now that I know that God does not want us to have tattoos and also, too, like, I also haven't been too much of a fan of my tattoos anyways. I felt like they could have been done better. I actually wanted a cover-up for one. Um, so, yeah, I don't plan on getting any more tattoos, and I actually want the tattoos that I have removed. I do like the one on my ring finger, though, so I don't know. But I was watching videos of the laser tattoo removal process, and it looked like it hurt. So, um yeah, ain't nothing happening <laughs> overnight. Not it's it's not gonna be a one eighty overnight. You feel me? But um, yeah. And I wish I had my goal list in front of me, and I don't. But um, yeah. So that was something that I wrote down for that. Um, I also threw away that vinyl that I told y'all I was gonna throw away. Um, I'll speak more on that later when I feel led to and shout out to my brother for listening to my record collection episode and buying me a vinyl to add to my collection. He bought me, uh, 36 chambers. So he peeped <laughs> the, um, poster that's behind me here at the stool that I'm recording at. And he peeped that I didn't have that on vinyl and he gifted it to me. So shout out to my brother Darius for buying me 36 chambers and, you know, having me add that to my collection. But yeah, that vinyl that I told you I was going to throw away, quite literally threw that away too. And I'll speak on that later. Um, also, another reason why I really want to remove my tattoos and one that I have in particular um, still not smoking, still not drinking, um, still working on not cursing, but I'm getting a whole lot better at it. Like I quite literally been writing a few raps that I'm not cursing in. And I'm very proud of myself because I feel like I still been sliding like, okay, I'm in my bag. I'm in my, you feel me? And not one curse word. Stop playing with me. Um, 
but yes, I'm currently like just releasing things that I have in my vault. Of course, there's going to be things that I release after now <laughs> that might have a few curse words in it. So I don't need nobody jumping down my throat like, you said you was going to be doing it. I know what I said, but I'm releasing songs that was already recorded. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, let's see. Episode four was pushing P. Um, so yeah, I spoke on the introduction episodes about, you know, my faith and what I'm standing on. I let y'all know that that foundation has been ripped up and I've been in this pruning season that's been very uncomfortable of things being stripped away from me. Um, episode three was about, um, you know, the timeline of my past year up until now and the goals that I have for this year. Of course, a lot of those have changed now that I've been changing. And I spoke on episode six, my current record collection. I also spoke on episode nine as far as what I'm still working on cutting out. Um, what's else? What else is in my notes? I also found me a therapist. I can't remember if I told you guys that or not. I know that was a goal that I had listed. Um, still not using my bartending certification, but because God no longer wants me drinking, I feel like God is also pulling me away from being in that type of scene and in, in environment. So yeah, me getting a bartending certification was something that I was doing on my own, thinking that I was about to hurry up and get some money. And God was like, uh, yeah, I ain't want you doing that. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Um, also, 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 that man that I was mentioning, I think in the past two episodes, maybe it was just episode nine. I don't know. I feel like I mentioned him in episode eight as well. That man that I was mentioning that I'm with, no longer with. And I'm going to just keep it at that. Um, I wish I could speak more about it because God is so good. So, so good. And what I went through with him, not giving him too much credit, but what I went through with him is what definitely shook me and pushed me closer to God even more. Not saying that was the one and only thing, but he played a huge role and he's also a part of my testimony that I'm going to be sharing later, but currently still in the thick of it, in the recovering process. And, um, yeah, but with the enemy meant for evil. And I literally just posted this scripture on my Instagram story. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. Stop playing with me. Um, yeah, so your girl is single. <sighs> happily, happily single. Jesus Christ. I was chilling before I met him and he crossed my path. But now, like, I'm big chilling. It's like I, I never go out of my way to look for a man. Like, I, I've never been that person like, oh, my God, I want to get married. God, can you send me a man? Like, I when I say I be chilling, like, low-key avoidant towards relationships, like, I'm chilling, especially after I just after what I just went through. So, yeah, and. As I know that God has been ripping up my foundation and putting in the right foundation, I know that moving forward, first and foremost, if you're not God fearing, I don't want nothing to do with you. And it's so 
easy for people to say, oh, yeah, I believe in God. You're going to know about the fruit. If you know, you know. It's a lot of people who say they know God and they believe in God. Whole time, their spirit, nasty. Them as a person, terrible. <laughs> you going to know them by their fruit. And I'm going to leave it at that. Um... What else? Of course, with episode five, you know, with me changing my artist name, God has also been, you know, just speaking to me in my identity and allowing me to truly know my identity in Christ because I knew it. But like God is getting me to a place of like truly knowing and truly believing and as certain things are being stripped away from me, you know, habits, people, um, beliefs, like God is quite literally ripping up my foundation and the foundation that I, I had and is placing the right foundation within me in my life. And that's God. My foundation truly being God now, like truly <laughs> Being in the word and not ashamed to say that I believe in God and follow God and this is what I'm standing on. And yeah, I'm just super excited because God is so good. And like I said, I can't speak too, too much on everything that has taken place, but y'all when I say I was going through spiritual warfare, one, because like the enemy was attacking me and I wasn't even really like aware of why. And I was just crying out to God, like, God, like, why am I really feeling this way? And that's when I had the encounter that I had. And God, like, quite literally came to me in my bedroom, had me shook, shown me so much, spoke and said so much to me. And... After that, I'm like, oh, okay, like, this can get thrown away now. <laughs> you feel me? Like, the the crystal necklaces that I was wearing, like, I quite literally started to feel way down energetically. Like, it was just so much. But because I wasn't, like, fully, fully aware, God, like, put it in my face. And I was like, oh, got you. No brainer. I'm choosing you. So although it was difficult to accept that I was wrong and to continue to throw away other things because God was already stripping away the fact that he didn't want me drinking, didn't want me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like God was already like stripping so much away from me. And I feel like I really am in this season of just being pruned and like stripping away every layer of who I thought I was and truly like showing me like who I truly am knowing that I'm made in the image of God. And although it's been very uncomfortable, it's been very rewarding, and I am so grateful to God. So, so grateful. And, yeah, so God has truly been working on my identity. That is my response to um, episode five. Episode seven... When I think of episode seven, divine timing, the phrase twilight zone just instantly comes to mind. Like, bro, when I say as I was listening to each episode, being in a different place than I was when I recorded them, of course, you know, I took notes on, you know, how I knew I wanted to show up differently and, you know, better for the pod in general. Of course, you know, I'm recognizing ways in which I've grown, but on like a, another note, in addition to that, because I was in a different place in my life than I was at the time I was recording those episodes, I also was able to realize that things that I was saying weeks prior when I recorded those episodes, not knowing where I would be in weeks following once they were releasing, 
it was so trippy realizing that things that I had said weeks ago, even when I was a version of myself that I was no longer proud of and was heavily convicted by, I was saying a lot that I still needed to hear, like more than I did then when I recorded. Like a lot of the things that I said was still timeless. And weeks later, as I still was going through a very difficult time, and I forgot to mention to y'all, of course, once God has shown me what he shown me and told me what he told me and was basically telling me like, yo, you've been wrong. You've been trying to play, you know, both sides of the fence. I need you to choose one. And of course, after I said, oh, no brainer, like I'm choosing you on top of it being hard, (laughs) being stripped of even more after that, when I say all hell in my life broke loose, listen, (laughs) I quite literally felt like the enemy was like, wait, 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 wait. I don't got her no more. Let me, let me see if I can win her back. And so I feel like quite literally like (laughs) God and the enemy has been sparring over who's going to win my soul and my salvation. And it's been like the, the craziest experience to know that I already was going through spiritual warfare because so much has been taking place in my life. And I wasn't truly like aware of what was going on. I've always been aware that spiritual warfare has been taking place in my life, like since birth. But once I had the encounter with God and God, you know what I'm saying? Allowed me to truly be aware of what I've been in the middle of. I felt like once I was truly awakened to it and I chose God a hundred percent and I told God, okay, moving forward, like I really am going to choose you and move better and do my best to please you the way you know what I'm saying? To to truly show up in a way that's pleasing to you. After I did that, after I made that decision, literally all hell in my life broke loose and I felt like things only got worse. And that's the thing a lot of people don't tell y'all. When people be trying to recruit y'all and tell y'all, repent, Jesus is coming back. Make sure you have a relationship with God. Oh, do you know God? Like, The thing a lot of people do not tell people who are like, you know, on a fence or, you know, wanting to be baby Christians or whatever. The thing that a lot of people in the faith do not tell people is that it's going to get worse before it gets better. And following God is not all light, sunshines and rainbow. Rainbows plural forgot to put the s yes god loves you and god is gonna come for you and yeah but god is also gonna convict you and tell you when you wrong and although it's very rewarding to follow god there's forces that do not want you to know the real truth and want you to choose god so yeah I say all of this to say spiritual warfare is real and regardless of which side you choose, you're going to go through it. But why not want to be on the winning team that's going to have you protected no matter what? Um, yeah. <sighs> I'm just happy that God truly did hear my cry and listen to my prayer of truly wanting to be in alignment. And I feel like God has simply just been testing me to see if that's truly what I want. And it's hard. It's difficult. I've been crying almost every other day. I'm in a lot of situations that I can't see past right now. And literally just the other night, like over the past few weeks, over the past few months, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm trying to stay encouraged. I'm trying to keep going. You know, some days have been easier than others, but quite literally, maybe like a night or two ago, like 
the enemy heavily wanted my mind. Like so many thoughts that were just demonic and just not from God started to like plague my mind. Like I've had so much shame, so much guilt based off of, you know, past decisions that I can't take back. Like I, I can't change anything in the past. Right. And the thing about God, he doesn't shame us or condemn us or, you know what I'm saying? Like that's not from God. God corrects and God comforts and God forgives when you repent. But when I say I was dealing with so much guilt, so much shame, like I felt just worthless. Like I felt hopeless. I'm like, okay, God, like I'm, I'm trying to stay encouraged. Like I'm trying to keep my sight on you, but like, it's hard for me to have faith knowing that I still have to see what I see. And God has been trying to no, no, bring it, bring your focus over here. Look over here. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. And I feel like the enemy at the same time is like, nah, look at me, 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 look at me. And I felt like that voice just got louder and louder and louder to the point where I wouldn't say I've been depressed. I've just been spiritually weighed down because I've been just heavily convicted by a lot and I'm in the pruning season. So I know that my spirits are not as lifted as they should be and could be. But I haven't been depressed. I haven't been depressed because I I feel like I now know the truth that I so badly was looking for the whole time I had and just was doubting. And so I haven't been depressed. I'm just like, okay, it's just a very difficult season for me right now because I know that God is truly me, truly putting me in position to be in alignment as much as I say that I want to be in alignment. But when I say I literally had suicidal thoughts pop up on my mind. I said, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, nah. Because, like, I felt like the, the voice of the enemy was getting louder, getting louder, getting louder, getting louder, getting louder. And now, like, I feel like my heart is hardening, and I'm, and I'm getting mad at God because I'm like, God, I said that I choose you. I, I got rid of what you wanted me to get rid of. I walked away from what you wanted me to walk away from. But it's like, it's getting worse and it's getting worse and it's getting worse and it's getting worse. And God is like, I know, I know, I know, I know. But there's a method to the madness. There's a method to the madness. Like the foundation is truly being ripped up. And of course, that process is not going to be pleasant. And of course, there's going to be people, there's going to be forces that are going to be upset about this new version of you that I am forming you to be. And I'm like, okay, God, like, I hear you, like, I know this, but like, I just feel like the voice of the enemy was just louder than the voice of God. And it had got to the point where I kind of got tired of fighting back the thoughts because I'm like, okay, like I've been doing that. I've been doing that. Like I'm tired of doing that. And whole time following God and living in the world that we in is going to be an uh, a ongoing and a never ending process of that. But when I say suicidal thoughts started to pop back up in my mind and I haven't had those in years. I'm like, oh, no, nah. like what I'm in right now is a, a different type of awakening because I truly feel that I'm never going to be the same. Like I truly do know God and I truly have made up in my heart and in my mind that I'm following God and I'm following what I know and believe is the truth regardless of what other people think, regardless of what other people say, regardless of what I used to stand on, regardless of what I used to do, the change that I'm going through right now is 
a very pivotal process and change because I know that I'm not going to be the same person that I was before entering into this season. And that's why it's heavier than past seasons. That's why it's a different type of growth. And I'm just grateful. I'm just so grateful because I share with you guys that I've taken shrooms before and the first time I took shrooms, that was like the first time I had ever experienced anything like what I'm going through right now as far as a foundation being ripped up. Like, I felt so enlightened after taking shrooms. And right after that, so much in my life had changed. And it was a positive change, actually. Um, You know, even though, you know, shrooms is quote unquote a drug, but it's more of a plant. Either way, though, you feel me? God does not want us relying on anything else outside of him for, quote unquote, enlightenment. Right. So. Me taking shrooms for the first time was me. Experiencing was my first time experiencing something similar to what I'm currently go through, going through as far as like the foundation that I was standing on being ripped up because. Me taking shrooms opened up my mind to so much. And I was just like, wow, this is how I've been living. This is what I was accepting. This, this is who who I've been. Like, I, I felt like I clearly saw everything for what it truly was. And after that, when I say people started to fall away, situations started to fall away, beliefs that I had started to fall away and it all was of course you know negative things and things that were weighing me down but the fact of the matter is is although I was on this path of enlightenment and I was gaining information that's information that I still do hold close to me and God has shown me like okay yeah it's it's great that you have this information however one you went about it you went about discovering it the wrong way and two, you can't just rely on this information. You also have to rely on me and my word. And like I said, I felt like because I opened the door to so much that I shouldn't have, it had got to the point where I was started to lean on that more than I was leaning on God. And that's why God mm-hmm. brought it to my attention and was like, yeah, nah, <laughs> a little too much dip on your chip. Um, but yeah, episode nine, honoring your now, I'm still learning how to do that personally. You know what I'm saying? Like I so badly just want to get to the other side of a lot of things. I'm like, God, I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of being in survival mode. I'm tired of feeling like my life is an ongoing wilderness season. I'm tired of just going through all of these tests and trials like I know that that's what life is going to be, but I'm like, I'm just tired of just not truly being where I know I truly want to be. And knowing that God tells us like, oh, I have all of these promises for you. And and I, I believe that. I believe that. But I'm like, God, when am I going to get there? When am I going to see it? But I'm recognizing that I still have to honor my now by recognizing that the seasons that I am in are still very necessary to shape my character and to build up my resistance and my my perseverance. That's what I meant to say, to, to build up my perseverance because just like we feel like the weight of the world and our situations and our issues are heavy, the weight of God promises is heavy too. And it's going to crush you if you're not truly ready and prepared. And as I've been in this season of, you know, certain things being stripped away from me and God revealing certain things to me, I'm like, okay, it makes sense why you didn't give it to me seasons ago. It makes sense while I'm in this current season, why you don't feel comfortable giving it to me yet. But at the same time. (laughs) <laughs> my flesh is still like okay like we get it we understand but like can we speed up the process please you feel me but um yeah so where am I currently 
and I'm going to get into some announcements and things that I want to plug, and I am out your way. Right now, like I said, born again, choosing Jesus 110%, and yeah, I think I actually want to get baptized for my birthday this year. Like, that was something that was, like, planted in my spirit, and... Yeah, so I'm taking on that Christian role, you feel me, happily, <laughs> Team Jesus. Um, but yeah, like truly like just leaning more into the relationship that I have with God instead of just saying like, oh, yeah, like I know God, I believe God. Like, let me just say this quick prayer up real quick. Like, no, like really taking time to like read the word more for myself. And the thing is, is. At that time when I was saying like, oh, yeah, it says in the Bible, you know, tarot, crystal, stars, like, okay, yeah, it says that. But like I said, I didn't realize at that time I was taking it and manipul manipulating it to fit my narrative. I'm now in a place of trying to fit myself into God's word because that's what God wants. And just like reading any book. The more you read something and spend time with something, the more that you're going to gain more insight and revelation from it. Just like music. You'll hear a song that you probably don't like, probably don't care for all the time later on. Now you a fan of it. You get what I'm saying? And it's just like listening to a song with hella layers and meanings and bars. It's like, Every time you go back to it, you're going to catch something that flew over your head. So it's like, as I'm reading the Bible and like truly taking the time to like, okay, God, like, let me intentionally sit with this word, not to get what it is I want to get out of it, but like to see what it is you're trying to tell me. I really have been taking delight in it. And the Bible is the real tea. The Bible is the real truth. And I'm just so like fulfilled every time I read the word. Of course, I'm in places where I'm like, okay, God, like, I don't want to just keep reading your word, reading your word, reading your word, and nothing in my life in the physical is changing. But when you really do take the time to like allow yourself to be encouraged and spoken to through God's word, it is so rewarding. And that's just where I am right now. Um, been heavily in my word more. I'm currently in a season of uncertainty. Of course, like I said, I feel like all hell has been breaking loose and I cannot wait to share with y'all more about specific things that I've been going through, but God is good. And my testimony is only continuously being written and God is continuously getting the glory from all of it but yeah learning how to press more into God and truly feel the voice that I've been having in my life with God instead of other things instead of running away from myself um yeah of course like I said I want to stay consistent with the pod and I am going to as long as I can help it but Y'all growing with me and y'all moving through life in real time with me. So thank you to everyone who is along for the ride. I know that change is inevitable. And at the end of the day, I still want to take care of myself and listen to God. So if it comes a point in time where God's want where God wants me to step away, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, I'm able to still keep things moving, but as I am in a season of uncertainty, I am going to be transparent and say, I don't know what's next, including showing up for this pod. But I know it's from God. So if I do step away, it's not going to be for long. Yeah, I don't know why I'm whispering. Um, Like I said, I'm still cleaning out my vault as far as the music I'm sitting on. So y'all can expect new music from me every month for the rest of this year again as long as I help it and you know what I'm saying life does not get to life in too much to the point where I quite literally gotta just step away and tend to just real life but um yeah 
y'all should expect new music from me every month the rest of this year also i have a few pieces of merch left with my american name and brand and everything must go i quite literally think i only have maybe like two or three pieces left so um yeah i'm a promo i'm a promo it more on my socials but um yeah i need it off my hands um quite literally just make a donation or pay shipping or if you're in atlanta come get it off of me i need to get rid of it um but yeah i also have hella like cd inserts for my chaotic project like the cover art and the track list um for anybody who's interested i have hella inserts of that i don't have any more of the cds but i'm like for anybody who's interested in a cd you know cover art insert and i have hella flyers of my very first um release show that i did in honor of chaotic i think i did that show in 2019 yeah i have hella of those flyers too so if you grab some merch for me you can get you can get and keep um those as well as keepsakes or you know once i'm out of merch if you're interested in having one of the flyers or the cd inserts come holler at me i don't think holding on to all of the cd inserts and stuff though is too bad because i feel like at at some point i am probably gonna press up more cds just because that is my first project and yeah um i also want to build up my email list for both my artist email and the pie email to keep everybody up to date and to give y'all exclusive um you know details of things before things hit social media but also too y'all know these apps be acting funky sometimes and they be picking and choosing when they want to work so um yeah i really do want to build up my email list as well i'm gonna promote that on my social media as well but if you would like to be a part of my email list um i am gonna probably have like some type of incentive i'm gonna do like a drawing for like i don't know like a gift card or something i don't know yet i don't have new merch yet but I really, really, really do want to build up my email list. So if you support me in any way, my music, the pod, um, please be on the lookout for that or just shoot me an email if you're tuning in now before I get around to um, promoting it. Um, Kindle music at gmail.com, K-Y-N-D-L music at gmail.com or keys x seeds pod at gmail.com. Shoot me an email and tell me, hey, tuned into the pod. I want to be added to the email list. So it's going to be two separate email lists. The artist email email list, of course, is going to be for all music. And then the pod email is going to be for all things related to the pod. Of course, I'm going to cross promote. But yeah, it's going to be two different email lists. And I probably am going to do like a drawing for a gift card or something for anybody who joins either or or both. Um, and yeah, I promoted my tiktok um you can tune in to the pod of course at keys exceeds pod but my music and you know me posting things in my personal life is at re kindle r-e-k-y-n-d-l that's instagram twitter tiktok um like i said i'm gonna do more bible studies over there and um yeah youtube is also kindle it's either kindle or kindle music i don't know i post all of my music videos and you know visuals vlogs things of that nature over there but i also am posting these episodes under a playlist on my youtube channel so my youtube channel is a a hub for pretty much everything um but yeah and remixes and um freestyles are on my soundcloud but all things music wise and merch wise is on my Bandcamp kindlemusic.bandcamp.com and yes this is a very long episode but a very necessary and important one and your girl is tired of talking so with that said make sure you guys share this pod and share any of my content with everybody or 
someone in spe- specific in particular that you have in mind, please just share any of my content with other people, um, just other people in general, someone who you feel might be blessed by it, if you're blessed by it. And of course, like I said, if you have it to give and you feel led and blessed and, and I'm saying you God blessed it on your heart to do so, um, please buy uh, my music, Kindle Music dot bandcamp.com you can support my music over there by purchasing it and not only will you be making a donation but you will also receive a download of my music meaning if i was to ever remove anything off streaming you still got that joint on your phone on your computer you feel me so um yeah if you have it to give kindle music.bandcamp.com it has all of my music including um american releases and remixes and freestyles and my merch is also hosted over there, kindlemusic.bandcamp.com. I'm going to keep saying it. Um, but also, too, like I said, working on getting a camcorder. So, again, if you would like to sow a seed in that way mm-hmm. as well, um, cash app, dollar sign, rekindle. And, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in to yet another episode, another week. Make sure you guys stay tuned for me building up my email list and the drawing that I'm going to do for that or drawings, plural. I don't know. Um, But yeah, be on the lookout for all of the music that I plan to release throughout the rest of this year. I plan on building up my email list. Like I said, I'm going to be posting more content over on my TikTok and yeah just be on the lookout for everything that i have going on tap in with me everywhere you're able to tap in with me and i love y'all i'm out